Here's the project I'm currently working on. I'm pouring a 40 by 60 concrete slab out here on this location. Uh, the grading's already been done, as you can see. I've got my retaining wall built, and I've got my reinforcing steel mesh on site, uh, ready to roll. So my next step out here is to lay out and install my formwork. Uh, I'm going to use the retaining wall as part of that formwork, just to retain the concrete as it goes. Along that retaining wall, I'm going to want to put some kind of an expansion joint or something to allow a little bit of movement between the retaining wall and where the concrete rests up against it. So I have here what's called it just an expansion joint. It's just a foam backer, which uh, you can see it compresses fairly easily. So it'll allow for expansion and contraction of the concrete. This is what replaces the old 10 test that we used to use. Uh, this is much lighter, much easier to use, comes in a 50 foot roll. Uh, this here is four inches, so I'm gonna have to double it up at the back of my retaining wall here, or back of my pad, because I'm pouring it at six inches and uh, it will gradually taper down, but uh, it's uh, this is only four, so I'm gonna have to double it up at the back end. Um, but this is just like your sill gasket. It's a really thick sill gasket. It's uh, a lot lighter and, and even more affordable than our, than our 10 test was. A lot easier to work with for sure. I'm going to use a laser level to lay out my formwork. Uh, this is a DeWalt one, a Radar La Box brand new. Uh, I just opened it last night and charged it up. So I'll show you what you get inside there, but things that don't come with it that you're also going to need if you're using a laser level. Uh, the, the key advantage to using this laser level is today I'm by myself, so I can do all this layout work all by myself. Now you're going to need a tripod, and you're also going to need a leveling rod right there. A string line would be handy, of course your tool belt, you always need that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open this up now and see what we've got inside. Uh, first thing that we have here is the instructions. We should read them over for sure. Uh, lasers can cause serious eye damage. Uh, you're also supposed to post this sign on site when you're using it. Uh, so right out of the box, uh, the things that we have is this little receiver right here. You can probably see it's still got the little plastic over the window here. So this is a sensor that reads the laser as it comes around different settings on this. Uh, we'll be able to adjust the range as to how accurate it is. Um, we can be extremely fine or have a wider range if we're just generally laying out. Uh, like when I did this stone here, it didn't have to be perfect. So I had a wider range so I could easily find it in, in uh, well, find the range here and use the, uh, the equipment to level things out. Uh, there's a battery and a charger. And I charged this up last night, as I said. This is pretty cool because it has a remote, so I can turn it on, off. Uh, I can adjust the, the angle of the, of the laser, uh, and I can adjust the speed of the laser also. So I'll talk more about that. This is to mount it on the wall, so I can mount it right on, right on the wall uh, if I'm doing uh, T-bar ceiling, uh, or if I wanted to lay out something vertical so and here's the laser itself so it will lay out a horizontal line by installing it flat like this if I install it up and down it'll lay out a vertical line if I was doing that uh, it will automatically level once I attach it to the tripod and leave it alone so let's go ahead and set that up now So the first thing I'm going to worry about is where I'm going to set up the instrument. So on my site here, I could go just about anywhere, uh, but what I'm going to do is set it up right in the middle. One thing we have to be concerned about, as I mentioned before, is that that laser beam that, that casts a light around, uh, it can cause eye damage. So we want to make sure that we don't set the, the instrument up at a, at a level that is going to be constantly going in our eyes. We want to make sure that that doesn't happen at all. So I can either set it up high or set it up low. Uh, one of the problems with setting it up low is that often, uh, especially in this scenario here, 
I'm going to be bending down to install my formwork. So I'm going to set it up just a little bit higher, just above my eye level. Uh, and I'm going to pick the middle of my, my future pour here, just as a nice place to put it. It's going to be out of the way and uh, it's kind of a central location where I can walk back to it at any point. I've encountered my first problem. This is my old instrument here. This is just a an optical level. You know, just pretty simple. It's got a single bubble in there. You level it up with the four leveling screws. Uh, but where it attaches to the tripod is with this right here. And you'll notice on this instrument, that that's not gonna work. Anyway, fortunately for me, I can set this right down on a level surface or a reasonably level surface. It's got these three bumpers on there. I can set it down and as long as nobody's going to bump that on me, uh, it'll continue to cast that straight level light that I require. Now that my tripod's not going to work, I'm going to go ahead and set this up in the corner of my retaining wall right here. Uh, you would attach this normally the way you would an optical level or your automatic level or theodolite or whatever instrument you have to the top of your tripod. Just make sure that the screws match up. So uh, I got to put the battery in first thing. So this uh, DeWalt model happens to open up like this. Take my 18 volt, put it in there, lock it up. All right, and I can set it in and you can see the controls are right on here. I have uh, all the controls that I had on, on the remote. So I'll hit the power button. And uh, just to show you what the other ones do, this right here, is the speed you can control the speed of that if i was installing something inside and i wanted to see that line like uh putting a, a wainscoting around or uh, again with a t-bar ceiling if you can you can slow that down or speed it up if you slow it down you're able to see the line a little bit better it's just a little bit brighter and this here that looks like a v that's controlling how much like the angle of projection of the the light that we're showing so if i'm only doing a little level part on a wall somewhere i'm going to slow my speed down and i'm going to turn that range down to a more of an acute angle so that it's just going back and forth over that little portion there and it will become uh it's a lot brighter for me to see so sometimes what happens this instrument's pretty good when you set it up there's little blind spots for the laser right where these fins are this is, these are really thin fins here, so we're okay. Uh, I've seen some of them, they'll have like three fins and they're a little bit wider and it just creates that little blockage there. And we'd be surprised how often you end up standing right in that spot trying to find level at that point right there. So I'm gonna put it down in the corner and turn it on and it will automatically level itself. This level has about four speeds that it operates on. It's self-leveled right now, so it's it's level. You can see the line right there. Well, it's not a line at this point, it's a dot. It's being projected from the laser at this point here. So I can change the speed of that. So that was, that's off, it's not spinning. Now, this is kind of a slow, strange speed here. You can see it come by. We go a little faster. That would show up as more of a line if we were inside and then fast you can hardly see that happening now that our laser's all level we'll have to attach the reader to the leveling rod just like we were setting up for an optical level extend it until it clicks into place then i'm going to take my reader which looks like this. Here's the back side where it clamps on to the leveling rod. And here's the front side with uh, on off. And uh, as I mentioned before, we can adjust the range here. And this also has different levels of sound volume. And uh, I'll show you how to use that. So I'm gonna guess about what height I need to set that at to read. And then I'll turn it on. 
what I want to have is a solid beat. Right there, that's what I'm shooting for. So when I have a fast beep, I'm high. When I have a lower beep, I'm low. So I want it to be right there. And I'm gonna adjust the volume so I don't go crazy. I can actually turn it off too. So that's how we attach this. Now with the reader set, I can read on the rod exactly what that elevation is. So I can see that it's four feet, six, but it's less it's because it's below. And remember each one of those, the ends of each one of those is a eighth of an inch. So four foot six, four foot five and seven eighths, four foot five and three quarters, four foot five and five eighths. So four foot five and a half is what we're at exactly right here. So what I wanna do is mark the top of my slab. My slab's gonna be six inches. So on the high end here, I'm going across on my 60 foot direction here as level. So I want it to be perfectly level. So that my first step is to set this at the level for top of slab. So I need to take six inches off this, go down six inches. So that brings the bottom of the rod up that six inches. So I will have to set that for uh, four foot 11 and a half. So I just loosen it off, slide it down, four foot 11 is right there, four foot 11 and a half is that point, and that's what I want right there. Now I have the top of slab all laid out on my 60 foot side, I have to mark my opposite side. This is going to be an outdoor sport court, so I need a little bit of drainage, but I want it to be as level as possible so that we can put a rink out here in the wintertime. Uh, so it needs to drain along the 40 foot direction. So on the 40 feet I picked, I want to drop a half inch over 10 feet. So if I've got 40 feet, four times a half inch, it needs to drop a total of two inches. So I need to drop this down the bottom of the rod down two inches so I just need to bring this up two inches so I can get that lower end where I need it to be so that's about it as you can see they're pretty easy to use easy to set up and uh, the probably the biggest advantage to using a laser level is that you can use it by yourself